Hey guys, it's been a minute. I feel like it's like been so long since they've sat in this room and filmed. Actually, you've never seen this little backdrop. I'm trying to like set up like areas in my house that I like to film in. Um, obviously with a newborn, it's a little more difficult, but I had my baby Harlow on May 22nd, 2022. So she just turned seven weeks old on Sunday and it's crazy. It's like the time has flown by, but the time has also like gone really slow in a lot of ways. Um, I opened up my platform for questions for you guys. You guys asked all of the nitty gritty Q and A. I had my, or all the um, postpartum questions. And if you've been on my channel for any length of time, you probably know me to be like pretty brutally honest and I kind of just like say it like it is. Um, so some people don't like that and that's fine. Not for everybody. <laughs> you can be like the cutest pineapple in the world, but there's gonna be people that don't like pineapples. So um, I feel like when I was going through like my pregnancy journey and like, watching all these birth videos and like all these like mom vloggers and stuff, like no shade to anybody, but I just feel like it's, there's, um, it's very few and far between where there are, you hear Harlow in the background, grandma's got her, so she's fine. Um, but, uh, it's so hard to focus when your baby's crying. Like my nipples are going to start leaking in a second. Um, so, uh, I just found that it was really unrelatable. Like a lot of the channels that I would like find and watch. I just, after I finally had my baby, I was like, I can't relate to this at all. This is like super unrelatable. Um, they just like glamorize the absolute shit out of having babies and they've got their perfect filters and their perfect this and perfect that. And like, I will just always keep it 100% honest on this channel. And some of the things that I'll probably say in this video, people are gonna be like, oh, how could you say that or think that? But like, like everyone's different and everyone feels differently. So like, we've got to normalize like all of these feelings because everything that we're feeling after you have a baby and you know, during pregnancy, they're valid and you're not a bad person for thinking them. Everyone has thought them. They just don't share that with you or tell you. I'm here to tell you. So <laughs> I gathered a lot of your questions here. There were some really good questions and some of these questions are like kind of more of a bigger video, um, you know, so I'll probably do like some other videos about like certain essentials and things like that. But you guys asked some really good questions. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So the first question is like toughest parts and recovery tips and how was recovery? So, um, recovery was pretty brutal. I would say when I got home for me, um, I stopped bleeding at about five weeks postpartum. I went through tons and tons of pads. Um, and I think there's a question in here about like must need products and I'll kind of go through a little bit of that. And I actually wanted to do an entire video on things you need before you come home from the hospital or birth center or whatever. Cause there's some stuff that I didn't have and I've watched every video out there. I've read every vlog or blog out there. I mean, and I still had things that I was like, why did no one mention this such as a mattress pad cover? So I'm going to go over some things with you guys more in depth in different videos. So if you want to see that, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below, just so I know you guys want to see it. So I'll get it out sooner rather than later. But, um, so, uh, recovery was about five weeks. I bled quite a bit. There was, I was going through probably about three pads a day or something like that. Um, I used a lot of witch hazel cause I had gnarly hemorrhoids. I mean, my hemorrhoids were so painful, like just sitting or getting up was like a process. Like I had to like slowly get up. So that was brutal. Um, uh, Pooping was, if you guys were watching my Instagram at all, you know, you know how awful pooping was for me. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is worse than everyone said. Cause a lot of people were like, oh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Well, you didn't have hemorrhoids, okay? If you have hemorrhoids, I'm so sorry. I feel you. They are so much worse than you ever anticipate or think they will be. They were awful. Um, but as far as like my hole, my hole, um, I had, uh, I tore, to a two. So that's, it's up to a four. I tore a two, um, cause I had a meconium baby and I had to get her the F out of there. So I had stitches that were inside. Um, and I still, to this day, seven weeks have not had a, um, follow-up at the hospital. It's super weird that they didn't tell me, but I'm going out of town now on Tuesday and I don't have time to do it before I get back from Germany. So it is what it is. But, um, yeah, I had stitches and so wiping, I was just kind of like lightly pressing, um, Perry bottle was super key for peeing and pooping. I will tell you, you must get the Frida one. That like curved thing makes all the difference. I was like, oh, I'll just use the one at the hospital or I'll put this one in this bathroom, this one in another. And the Perry bottle was like, like the best. 
I would say some of the toughest parts um, of uh, from birth to now was like having, especially if you have a C-section, I can't even imagine, but like having uh, all of that down there going on and it being painful with hemorrhoids to get up and down to quickly get up and handle my child. That was probably more difficult. Uh, it's probably even more difficult for people with a C-section because when you're breastfeeding, a lot of there, there's a lot of stuff and baby and kicking and whatever on your stomach. So that can be probably, <laughs> that'd be really challenging, but that was challenging for me. Recovery tips and tricks. Gosh, um, I think a postpartum band is super key. I'll link you guys to the one I, um, that I wore below. And I also wore some postpartum underwear from Leonisa, which I can link you to below. There's also, oh, I was gonna say there's a video, but I actually did it on my Instagram stories where I showed you guys a bunch of my favorite ones, but I'll link some for you below. Um, the first postpartum belt that I bought on Amazon sucked ass. Um, it was awful and I feel bad because I actually was like, oh, I bought this. And I showed it in a video, but I actually hadn't used it yet. I don't recommend that one and I don't recommend it because it comes in three pieces and the one I finally ended up getting and using and still use is just one piece and it makes it way easier. Um, tips, there are some, there's uh, someone told me about Dermaplast, Derm, Dermablast or whatever. It's like a spray and I didn't even know you could put it on your downstairs area, but it helps numb a little bit, which is super key. Um, and other than that, I don't really have any tips or like tricks. Like I wish I had tricks, but like, it just is what it is. You have to go through it and it, it's, uh, yeah, it's a little brutal. But, um, one thing I will tell you to get, especially if you have hemorrhoids is get an enema, get a few enemas. Thankfully my stepmom was here and she went out and got enemas for me because I could not poop. Like I was horrified. I was scared to poop. She got me an enema and I like used it and I was able to go to the bathroom and it was so much easier than sitting there straining on the toilet. Another thing I will say, I guess this is kind of a tip, is if you are going to take your first poop, take a washcloth and bring it in the bathroom with you, put warm water on it and hold it onto your vagina up to your butt so that you feel that you have some support there while you're like going to the bathroom and don't push too hard. So toughest parts about being a new mom, um, for me, uh, was the first two weeks like just feeling like I couldn't do anything right to make her stop crying and it made me feel like she hated me and I know that's crazy and it's probably just an irrational thought which it most likely it is it's not most likely it is an irrational thought but in the moment like you have this super fussy baby for two weeks that I swear if she wasn't sleeping she was screaming or crying and that was really really hard on Nick and I mentally we were just like oh my gosh like this this child hates us. Like there's nothing that we can do. And with him being a firefighter and a paramedic, he's used to fixing people and fixing situations and him not being able to fix our child was like really hard on him for sure. And for me, it was just like, it was brutal to have this thing that you grew, you created, and I should know how to fix everything. Right? No. So that was really hard mentally. I was just like, I was a mess. I just thought like I couldn't do anything right. And sometimes I still feel like that. Like we're on week seven and that feeling has definitely still lingered, you know, because there'll be days where like, like the other day she cried for an hour and a half straight, I swear. And nothing worked, like nothing worked. I would say the other um, toughest part initially and still to this day, even when I have help and stuff, from like my mom and my stepmom is that like you feel like you can't go anywhere you feel like you can't get anything done the moment you like set them down you think you're gonna go like make yourself a sandwich or something they start screaming and so it's it's been um that has been definitely challenging did you wait the full six weeks so um i just had sex for the first time i think like a week ago and i went ahead and got nice and drunk so that i was a little more loose and like i just was scared about it so i was like i'm gonna have a couple cocktails um don't worry i didn't breastfeed during this time okay sit down karen um so i did did wait the full six weeks i want to say we waited I thought it was five and I waited six. So if it's six, then whoops. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really remember anything. Uh, that's how drunk I was. Cause I hadn't drank for like nine months, hardly. Like, I mean, I had like a glass of wine here and there, but, uh, yeah, so I can't really tell you, but I 
don't remember it hurting and I do remember asking Nick because I was horrified that it was gonna feel different down there because I felt like when I was feeling it, it felt a little different to me. So I was like terrified that like I was gonna have this messed up vagina that my husband was gonna have to deal with now. So um, he told me that it felt the same and was nice and good. So bless Nick's heart though. Like if it was not good, he wouldn't tell me. Like he would lie until he would take that to the grave just to make me feel better. So um, as nice as that is, I kind of really, really want to know the truth. So Nick, how long did you bleed for? So I think I kind of answered this a little bit before, but I bled for about five weeks and there was some little clumps here and there, but mostly just like a lot of blood. And then it just got lighter and lighter and lighter. Um, and I did have to change my pad quite a bit. So make sure you have those like next to your toilet cause you're going to need them. Um, another thing that I didn't really think about was make sure that you have a lot of uh, dark underwear from when you come from home from the hospital because you're gonna make you're gonna leak all over your underwear uh, So make sure you have underwear that you're not afraid to throw away or they're black. How is breastfeeding going? Okay, so I just did a podcast episode on this I don't know when exactly it will be out But I um, am on a podcast with a couple friends called yeah No, I know and I we just did um, a whole breastfeeding episode because that's kind of a whole video in its own as well I would say that it's not going great and that was kind of like something that really surprised me um, about this journey is like I just kind of thought like even literally up until I had my baby I thought breastfeeding it's easy like you just put your child on your boob and like you eat a couple extra calories and like you drink a lot of water and it's all good uh, no. So, well, not for me anyway, everyone's experience is different. So hopefully you have a better experience than I do or are having a better experience than I have. But, um, I have not really been able to pump a whole lot. Like, I don't know how people fill up a whole freezer. Like, I'm just like sitting here like, uh, am I broken? Like, what's the deal? When I pump, I don't get a whole lot out, but I was also told that pumping is not, uh, an indication of how much milk you're producing. But I also had a baby that had tongue ties and lip ties. We got those sorted out pretty early on, like three days in or something like that. And breastfeeding is still difficult though. She's a really big baby. She's almost 13 pounds um, now. She was almost 10 pounds when she was born. So uh, breastfeeding has always been a little bit challenging um, because we introduced the bottle somewhat uh, early on because my milk didn't come until the fifth day and she was like starving So she's used to a bottle where it comes out faster and easier which causes more gas of course and all that shenanigans So it's been a bit of a battle um, I've tried a bunch of different supplements. So like if you guys want to hear a video I've done a lot of research not that I know everything, but I definitely have done a ton of research I've tried a lot of different supplements and um I'm still breastfeeding, but what I'll typically do is breastfeed her and then when she starts getting fussy and annoyed that there's not enough coming out and I switch her to both, um, I will uh, give see how long she's breastfed and then I will also offer her a bottle of either breast milk. Usually I'll just have like a tiny bit in the fridge from the last pump session or something um, or the last two pump sessions and I will do formula after that if that's not enough. Uh, which brings me to my next question. What kind of formula do you feed Harlow? So we started off feeding Harlow um, Holly, which is from Germany, and you can get the Holly formula and the next one I'm going to talk about within about two to three days, but shipping is like about $44. It's from Germany. It comes very quick. Uh, supposedly Holly, Bobby, and Hip are like the three best formulas you can get out there. Um, that's what I've heard. I will leave some links down below. I left these in the last video as well, but you can get this formula right now. Shipping is a little pricey, but what can you do? So we started off with Holly, the cow milk one, and then I switched to the goat milk one thinking that she would be, uh, it would be better for her. She wouldn't be as uh, irritated by it because we have a very, very fussy baby. She's um, got gas. 24 seven, like it's pretty brutal and it hurts her. So, um, we did that one. And then now I'm on the hip, um, pre combiotic. I don't know if I'm saying that properly. Um, one, and I thought I purchased the HA, which is hypoallergenic dude. It is so confusing when it comes to formulas and like all this stuff, like it is just like super confusing. So I will link you to and list what I'm saying down below. But what I'd like to get is the, and pre, not to be confused with 
preemie or anything like that. Pre just means there is no, um, um, why I'm drawing a blank starch. There's no starch in it, which why the fuck would you put starch in baby formula formula anyway? I don't get it. But anyway, so we're on the, um, the hip pre combiotic and it's like for sensitive stomachs. So I actually thought I was purchasing the HA, which is the hypoallergenic version of that, which I didn't. So if, if, she's not doing well on this one, then we'll get that one. And hopefully some of her gas issues will be sorted out. But I've done a lot of other things too, that if you guys want to see a breastfeeding video to hear like about my journey and like how it's going and what I've tried and like what's working, what isn't, um, let me know. And I will definitely do that. Cause I could talk for quite a while on that because I'm pretty passionate about it. And I've also talked to some other people that I know that are breastfeeding that gave me some tips and tricks and things like that. So I'd love to share all of that with you if you're interested let's talk about how or what breast pumps I'm using. So I have three breast pumps right now and I feel like I have spent a, I just spit on my face. I feel like I spent a, a small fortune on like baby stuff in general, but like a lot of like the supplements and like breastfeeding stuff and to help me with that journey. So I started off solely with this right here and it has a little bit of milk in it cause I was pumping, but this is the willow um, the willow go or the willow. Yeah. The willow go and you stick it in your bra. There's like breast milk dripping off of it. <laughs> um, you stick it in your bra and you just turn it on. You have to charge these. So I always feel like things that you have to charge are not really like as like strong as they could be if you plugged it in. So those have been really great. Um, some days my supply is totally different than others. And apparently that's normal. That's something I didn't know. Um, but these work pretty well. They're big and bulky. Like they're in like your shirt and you feel like you have these giant like knockers, like Miss Doubtfire or something, but that works pretty well. Um, especially if you're like on a road trip or like whatever. So I have those, they're kind of pricey, they're about $360. And then I also purchased the Lansino, um, breast pump, which I'm not a huge fan of just some of the different things about it. I don't really care for. Uh, I do like the screen on it though. Cause you can kind of like see how long you've been pumping for. You can see what the level is. So that's kind of cool. Um, the other day I used when we were filming our podcast, my friend Brooklyn had her, um, Medela pump and I forgot mine. So she let me borrow it and, um, I borrowed hers and I really liked it and I got more milk out than I had recently. So I was like, Oh, I need this. So I purchased, um, one that I'll link you guys to. I literally got it the same day. Um, it has a really cool carrying case with it. It has like a little pack with an ice pack in the center. It's like a little lunch bag thing that you open. It's got like a little ice pack in the center with four bottles. I really like that one. I like the hookups, um, little cords that go to the machine, like into the little guys. Like I like those a lot better than the Lansano one. So I would prefer that one over the Lansano one. However, it is double the price, uh, but worth it with what you get for it, in my opinion. And I'm going to also send the, uh, receipt to my insurance and see if they will cover it. Um, but those are the three that I, have used. So if you have any recommendations and, you know, pros and cons to certain ones that you have tried in the past, like leave them in the comments below. I'm sure we'd all love to hear. I would love to hear. Cause I'm just like, is there a certain breast pump that's going to like make more breast milk come out of my boobs? Like someone help me. So I don't know. I've so far, I've been liking the Medela. I did get about four ounces out this morning when I pumped. Um, and then right now this was like a pitiful amount. So like I, I try and put her on my boob as much as possible, but um, that's not always easy when we're out and about. Okay, someone asked about must need products. So I will mention that I do have a spot on my website. I have a blog where you, I'm literally every day uploading or updating, I should say, my monthly favorites list. So this is like clothes, fashion, like jewelry, hair stuff, like stuff that I'm loving. And then I have a section for like baby and pregnancy and maternity stuff that I add to. So you can see kind of like, products that I'm loving or that you kind of need. Um, I think you need <laughs> in that section. And then I also have an Amazon storefront page where I, I update that daily as well, multiple times a day where I add things, um, that I'm loving. Like today, I just added some stuff I just bought to travel with for her. Um, and I will add the pump to it. So there's a bunch of stuff on there. So I will link you guys to those in the description box below. And you can just like check those periodically. I also post a lot of stuff in my story. Um, 
But I mean, I guess it depends what we're talking about. If we're talking about like postpartum or what, and this list could just go on and on and on. It really depends on what you're like struggling with. But I will say that the butter breastfeeding pillow has been super key. My breast friend, I don't really use it at all. Um, there's a bunch of products that I bought that people are like, you need this. And like, I'm sure it was wonderful for their journey, but I haven't used it at all. The Hakka is one of those, the one that sits on this side. I don't, I literally don't use that at all because she would just kick it off. Like there's no room. My baby is huge. Like she is taking up this whole area. Like a Hakka would never fit there. And then there was like Hakka ladybugs that I got that I think are a must have, um, postpartum. So I'll link those to you for you below. There's two that I found. One is a little more low profile that you can like wear out and about without having this like bulbous like thing under your bra. And then one is just the Hakka one that like is better for sleeping and it catches like all your milk. So like if your baby's drinking on one side, I would put it in this bra and it catches all of it. Um, and in the beginning I used to get quite a bit out of it and now I'm, I don't really wear it throughout the day. Um, but I end up leaking a lot in the morning when I wake up and that's kind of it. And then throughout the day, there's a couple drops here and there, but it's nothing too crazy. Um, and I'm trying to think like what else are must need products. I would say like lots of pacifiers, if that's the route you're going to go. Um, I wasn't sure in the beginning if I was going to do pacifiers, but according to a lot of, um, just team tongue tie in San Diego or her pediatrician, like it's a really good comforting, um, thing for babies and so it's actually really good for them because I wasn't sure if I was going to do it at all but I'm really glad that I did. What was it like when your husband went back to work especially with two dogs? So sadly I only have one dog now. Um, Leo passed away and I'm not going to talk much about it because I'm going to cry. Um, but I will, I said this in another video and this is one of the things that I like will always be like totally real about because someone said, Oh, how could like, that's how, I don't know what they said. They said something like, how could you say that? But I will tell you that your dog will most likely be insanely annoying to you after you have a baby. Um, she's actually laying right here, <laughs> but she has, it's, it's just a lot of work to take care of a newborn, um, let alone other animals on top of it. And I have quite a few animals, if you know, so I have a whole room of reptiles and I do have someone that helps me with my reptiles and all of my animals. So that has been awesome. But when you baby talk your baby, your dog comes over because they're used to being baby talked. And you, the last thing you want in your face when you're trying to baby talk a baby or a fussy baby is like your dog in your face, in my opinion. So I have to say like, um, having a dog, uh, has been very annoying. It's been, um, challenging and frustrating and I love my dog. Don't get me wrong. But like, I also like love my baby more. And when I'm trying to care for my baby, it's really annoying to have a dog in my face. Um, so, and she's such a good dog too, but it just, it just is what it is. Um, and I was like literally terrified for Nick to go back to work. I really was. And I, you know, I've had a few days where I've texted him. And I'm like, I'm literally going to jump off a bridge. Like I can't get her to stop crying. Like I feel like I've tried everything and I think it's kind of trying to figure out your baby's cues and really paying attention to stuff. So if you're someone that like likes to write things down so you can like see exactly like patterns, do that. I will also recommend an app called Cubtail. You can invite family members to it. Uh, whoever, but you plug in when the baby has had a diaper change, how much they've eaten, when they've breastfed, when you pump, it has all of these features and it really helps us like pinpoint like, okay, she had formula that time and breast milk this time and she's got gas this time. Like you can really kind of like get as scientific with it as you want, but um, that's super key. But yeah, it's been hard because I feel like I can't go anywhere when Nick isn't here because I just am like, oh, that's just way too much work to try and like do all that by myself. And like, what if she cries in the store? And like, they're all real valid like fears. So I kind of just stay here and I try not to focus on work and I just don't think about it. And I'm like, okay, my one job is to like care for my baby. Like this is what we need to do. So I'm getting better at like learning her cues and what they are. Um, and like her little kind of schedule, we follow like a very, very loose schedule. And I can talk more about that in a different video if you'd like, but, um, yeah, that's kind of where we're, where we're at with that. But yeah, when he went back to work, it's challenging because um, this weekend he's going to be at work for three days straight and I'm going to be here by myself with the baby for three days straight. So all I have to say is thank goodness we live in a world where we can have everything Amazon to our door. I can have groceries sent to my door. Um, cause I'm not really ready. I don't think to like go out like by myself with her, you know, soon I think I'll be ready to like 
go out with her and like go to the grocery store and like bring the stroller and like do all my stuff. Um, you know, and we'll see how it goes. My camera battery has 4% left. So let's get through these. How are your hemorrhoids? They are gone. Oh my gosh. So exciting. I'm so glad they were gone before I was able to have sex again. How embarrassing. <laughs> Cause I literally got on the bed spread eagle and I was like, can you check out my stitches? And I definitely wouldn't have done that if my hemorrhoid friends were still, um, there. So they're gone. Thanks for asking. Here's a question that I'm going to be brutally honest about. Um, someone's asked, did you feel a connection right away with Harlow or did it build? No one's honest. So, um, I feel like this is something that I actually, that was a little bit of a surprise to me. I want to tell you the truth and exactly how it was. And some people may say, Oh, how could you, but these are my feelings and these are just, this is what it is. And it's different for everybody. I'm sure. So when I had her, I obviously like loved her, but I did have a lot of, I had a lot of, I had a hard time with how fussy she was the first two weeks. Like she just, she didn't do anything but scream and cry. And I felt like she hated me. So I have to say, I did not feel a connection immediately. I just like, people are like, like, I swear someone asked me in the grocery store, like, are you like so in love? And I was like, not really. Like, honestly, she just cries and cries and cries and it's really hard. Um, so I have to say like, of course I loved her from like, I created her. I love her. I loved her. But did I feel a connection right away? No. I did not. Um, it was foreign to me. It was weird. Um, it was odd to have a baby that was breastfeeding. Like I just kind of was like, this is so weird. Like, look at her, like that was inside of me. And so I definitely did not feel a connection right away. And I def definitely didn't feel that like crazy, like love right away. It definitely builds built for me and it's still building. Like I can't wait to see her when I wake up in the morning, but like, and I like when I leave, I can't wait to see her but it does build. It like definitely builds. Like I feel like now that I'm seeing a bit more of her personality, she's starting to like smile and like kind of laugh, um, like socially, uh, she's ahead of the curve by the way, with a lot of stuff. But like now that I'm seeing that I'm like, I'm creating more of a bond. And I was just kind of like this kid like won't stop crying and I feel terrible. I feel so sad that she's in pain. Like whatever. But yeah, there was definitely not that initial, like, Oh my God, we're so in love. Like everyone's posts like that. I'm just kind of like, okay. <laughs> and I try not to judge, but like, that was just not my experience. Favorite quick meals to make. Okay. So definitely quick meals are super key because I kind of had this idea that, Oh, my newborn will sleep for a few hours. And that's what some people will show you on. Um, Oh shit. I just knocked over my breast pump. Some people will show you that on YouTube. And like, um, that was not a reality for me and still kind of isn't. Uh, so yeah, oatmeal balls have been one of my best friends. Um, oatmeal is really good supposedly for breast milk and creating breast milk. So oatmeal balls, I'll leave my favorite recipe down below. Those are super easy to make there. You don't have to turn an oven on nothing like that. Make like 30 of them and put them in the fridge because you will grab those and eat those throughout the day. And it's so key to have just like quick finger foods and quick things you can grab while you're a new mom and just a mom in general, because you're not going to have a lot of time to do that, especially if you have a fussy baby, like your baby's not going to want to be put down. And if you do put them down, they will scream. So it's really hard to make sure you're getting like food and snacks that you need. So those are super key. And then um, I've gotten here, uh, like mozzarella sticks are really good for just like grabbing and having a good snack. Um, and then also, um, protein bars, protein shakes. And then if you want something like a little more like a salad, like have everything cut up and ready to go or pre-make salads, like when your partner's home. So you have time to do that, like pre-make them, put them in the fridge. So you, all you have to do is add dressing that will definitely help. Do you ever co-sleep? Um, not really. And not because I don't want to cuddle with her or anything like that, simply because I don't sleep well when she's that close to me. Um, she, newborns are very like loud sleepers. They wake up in the middle of the night and cry for a second and then go back to sleep. Uh, she moves around a lot. Even like if she's swaddled, like she rolls around, dude, like our kid like is very strong, like she'll roll around and stuff. Um, so I pretty much sleep with her in the bassinet next to the bed. Basically I need to get a good night's sleep when I can get the sleep. So if I have her in the bed with me, I'm concerned that I'm going to roll over on her or Nick is going to, or 
you know, whatever. So in the morning, sometimes after like when she wakes up at like 5 a.m. and she'll feed, sometimes I'll put her like, I'll pull the blankets way down and like put her there. Um, and you know, whatever, make sure she's far enough from all the shit. But, um, yeah, we don't really co-sleep. I just, it's not, uh, it's not super great for me getting good sleep. Whew, that was a long video. I feel like I was like kind of rushing through it because I didn't feel like I could relax, like sit here relaxed and talk about everything because I didn't want to make this video too freaking long. So if you guys want to see any like more videos in depth on anything that I kind of like mentioned or talked about, uh, let me know. But um, thanks so much for listening. Thanks for submitting your questions. And if I didn't answer your question, please ask it below in the comments again and I will try to answer you with my 90 words per minute fingers, okay? I might be more than that now. Very, very fast. And if you guys have any other ideas for videos, please leave them in the comments below and thanks for watching. I'm trying to like keep up with like a schedule, but it is very hard when I'm here for like three days in a row without any help. So um, we will try and keep up with the schedule as much as possible, but at the end of the day, I'm putting my mental health first and my daughter. So if I have to miss a week or two here and there, I know you'll forgive me. Thank you. Um, we will see you in the next video. Bye guys.